Okay. Nice uh, work, guys. Excellent job. Um, hold on. Let's see where we're like. I want to see my wraps real quick before we go. All right. So no, we're fine. We can uh, begin our okay. ascent. Okay. Um, sh assuming the ship is stationary now. We are. Okay. Um, I guess I'll just string us out, and then we start coming up together. Uh, yeah. Standard procedure from mm -hmm. the bottom. Yep. Okay. So you're gonna go forward? Um, no, I'm gonna go starboard. Almost, no, probably 90 degrees or so at least for now. Stretch us out. This watch saw the dive begin, and so now we're going to be able to watch it end. 2,169 meters. We were there in the beginning. We were there. We shall be there in the end. <laughs> we saw many shrimp as we came down. I'm going to spin you around. I don't know which way is preferable. Um, I mean, we're... Zero, we're zero. Out. Yeah, we're all zeroed out. So if you just maintain this, we should come up just fine. Perfect. We're at 24. We're, uh, yeah. So I'll wait for you to catch up, and then we can get started. And then we'll, we'll send together. Yeah. Roger that. I'm going to turn off my auto heading. That way I don't have to worry about it. Let's turn off this thing. Hopefully our GFI goes away. Well, that was exciting. Yeah. Successful dive. That was too yeah, exciting. nice job, you guys. Oh, Did it. Valve as well, just just cause. What was that? Right. Get the valve. Also. <laughs> oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> uh, um, oh, you know what we should do? Oh yeah, that would help. <laughs> oh no, it's back on. No, it's not. Both thrusters again. <laughs> Hooray. We're like, uh, <laughs> uh, Are we just it, going straight up, or how is this thing? How is this happening? We don't have to do post ties. That's nice. Sorry? We don't have to do post ties. That's true. Yeah. Um, Best kind of watch. Except the blue water part. Welcome back to KOET, yes. New Water Radio. <laughs> Blue, uh, new Wave Radio. We're getting chats on congrats for the successful dive. Also a question about what the longest dive that we remember carrying out on Hercules. Does anyone say that again? Okay, the longest okay. dive that we've carried out using Hercules, what it would be. Oh, I, just, uh, I think the longest. I'm not sure. Oh, well, I think when I was doing it, it was about 20 hours, maybe. I don't think 20? it's gone over, I don't think gone over from 24. What I, hear, I haven't worked with you guys long enough to really know, but from what Trevor was saying is they try to keep the dives to about a day. Yeah, okay. it's about 20, 24, 20 to 24 hours. 24 hours. And then, like, if we're doing, like, continuous, I think it was, like, 20 to 24 hours with a four-hour turnaround. Right. We did uh, over 72 hours on ONC a couple of years back. I was going to oh, say, yeah. I think ONC, ONC has does. some, like, record-breaking ones, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. I don't know if I was there. Yeah, 72 hours, wow. Yeah. They've done that more than once because they've done that with us too, on a different vehicle. Was that Probably Tim? Was that yeah. the voice from the sky <laughs> we just got an answer from? And then we have another one. Um, about a new species of feather star that was discovered in Antarctica, how capable would Hercules be in those waters? Is Hercules specific just for warmer temperatures, or could we take her to a different location? Um, I'm sorry, repeat the question. Is it? 
It was mostly just, could we take Hercules into colder waters? Uh, oh, yes. Yeah, no problem. It's pretty cold as it is. Do we have a temperature readout? It's yeah, you like actually one or two uh, don't really get much colder than <laughs> what it's in right now. Yeah, I mean, two degrees anymore would be solid. I guess not with the pressure, but. <laughs> All right, looks like we're pretty good. The Come trick, and it, maybe the viewer is talking about like polar regions. Yeah, specifically which, to Antarctica, they were yeah, asking about. Yeah, which is fine for the ROV, but you need a I don't think proper a, ship with an icebreaker usually. Yeah, so uh, yeah. that's a crew problem. That's a crew limitation. Yeah. yeah. Hercules a, could do it, but Nautilus maybe not, right? Yeah, I don't think the pilots would want to do it. Well, I'd love to go to Antarctica. <laughs> that's on my bucket list. Yeah? yeah oh, yeah. I'm with the, uh, I've been working with the, a group. He d he's an astrophysicist, and they want to put up a balloon uh, for a telescope oh, yeah. uh, for gamma, yeah, gamma particles and stuff like that. And they're like scheduled to launch, uh, scheduled to launch in Antarctica. Oh. And uh, very cool. Yeah, next year. And then a friend of mine, he's also a PhD candidate out at UPenn, also doing something similar, where they get the launch out, go to Antarctica and launch it out. I don't know if he's looking forward to it though. Gabby's been there a bunch. Yeah, I think Lila's going too soon. What's your, you're at 20, 25. So I'll try to match that. All right. Auto ascent, engage. Oh, auto ascent. Do we have auto recover too? That'd be nice. That'd be really nice, yes. Yeah wake up and it's on deck yeah i mean if we don't care then yes we can make that happen. <laughs> if, you, if you don't care <laughs> it is <laughs> i guess that's true um do you, if you think we uh did we get rid of a plate do we need to we got like two they rocks. did drop a plate yes okay we don't need to drop another one then no i don't think so i mean we could um Coming up at uh, oh, you do the math if we're not coming up fast enough. It's I am hundred. Uh, like, I can't go up any faster. We're at twenty five. I don't know what twenty five meters a with a new model of the of the, of the block. I don't know how. Uh, I think twenty twenty five has been pretty normal. Pretty normal. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's fine then. We have eighty minutes. That's what it says right there. Eighty minutes. Oh, it does say it. We put that in, didn't we? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Silence you. <laughs> All right. You guys are so quiet back there. You I'm sleeping? <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Half. Wake up. <laughs> one eye is and the other one is not. <laughs> That's a talent. Yes. I'm actually like a shark. trying that, to come uh, up with a joke of the day unsuccessfully. What's that contemporary art artist that just did a bunch of blue squares and made a bunch of money off of it? You guys know what I'm talking about? I like it. It's kind of what I feel like I'm looking at right now. We would be experts. It's at art. That. Yep. All right, you all ready for a joke? Yes. No, I'll lay it on me. <laughs> what do you call an alligator detective? An alligator detective? Mm-hmm. An 
Alligator. <laughs> alligator detective. Investigator. Oh, you got nice. it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice job. Now you have to tell the joke. <laughs> I thought that was an alligator financial advisor. What? <laughs> 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 yes, that's also true. Actually, Dwight, this might be a question that you can answer. What kind of clearances or permits are required for OET to perform under sea dives? Oh, yeah, good question. Uh, well, it really depends where we're working. So um, in the case of Johnson Atoll, we needed to get a permit from um, the, uh, because it's a marine national monument, we had to get a permit from, uh, from NOAA and the management organization that um, supervises work in the sanctuaries. So we were able to get a research permit from them. And uh, if you're doing work, oh, the other, the other clearances that we need is from the US Navy. So uh, we make them aware of all of our dive target locations and they give approval that they're not doing any um, operations in the areas. That's important. Yeah, and then, uh, you know, if we're working in international waters, we really don't need any um, any special clearance or permits. Uh, but if we're working in the another country's EEZ, then we definitely need uh, to have a uh, clearance and a permit from our own State Department, from the U.S. State Department, and from the host country. Uh, so it all really depends on where where we're intending to work, what sort of clearances and permits we need. How long does, it, does that permitting process usually take? Um, it depends. It could be really quick or it could take a long time. Uh, Mexico, for example, took about two years for us wow. to get permits to work in Mexico for some reason. Um, other countries, it's typically a year, nine months to a year in advance that you want to start planning. So OET is probably planning now for the dives for next year then, huh? Oh, yeah. Yep. Yep. When we work in other countries, we usually bring a, an observer from that country with us. And they, uh, they participate in the cruise as a guest scientist. And we're responsible for delivering a full copy of all the data that we collect to that country. Does that include samples or mostly just written reports? All the data that's collected, reports for sure. Um, Probably samples. Yeah. Depends if they have the facilities to deal with them or not. And that's th those are sort of some international rules regulated through um, marine scientific research program with the State Department. So the U.S. State Department's very involved, and they are the ones who actually get us our permits. They work with the embassies of the other countries. Interesting. That's. That's nice. Yeah. Usually, though, any proposal that gets written or a project that gets conceived is in collaboration with researchers from the, those countries anyway. So yeah. you sort of have a connection there already, and um, that helps. Yeah, the permitting process is probably a lot easier when you're collaborating with yeah. someone from that area. Thank you for the question. Thank you for the answer. Sure. Any right. other fun comments from our uh, folks tuning in? Yeah, we have a question about the depth that we're exploring. So we were down at 2,778 meters today, and we are currently at 1,936 ascending. Um, we are asking about jet skis. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite sure where that one came from, but no, no jet skis. We will not be in the water at all. Sounds pretty fun though. Yeah. Maybe we should look into that. Start smelling that nice salt water kind of makes you want to dip your toe in, but not on this expedition. See if I can stump somebody with another joke here. Because if not, we're going to have to start singing or something. <laughs> Don't threaten me with a good time. Uh oh.
So we have quite a large number of samples that we will be basically rushing to get off of the ROV once it's up. We have, let's see if I can do a little uh, summary here. Might take me a moment. And all those samples need to be processed right away, right? Um, Except for within, the rock. within a reasonable time frame, yeah, the rocks are pretty much just going to stay rocks. <laughs> we hope. Uh, well, I hope yeah. What makes you think that? <laughs> I could be wrong. I don't know a lot about rocks, so. Because rock never dies. Ooh. <laughs> never lives. <laughs> you can cut them in half with a saw, and they're just fine. <laughs> <laughs> what if they're silently screaming in their own language that none of us understand. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh. Apparently, uh, my partner told me this, that plants actually emit sound when they're in harm, but it's at a frequency that humans can't hear. Oh I, I can't fact check that, but... Oh boy. <laughs> we might have to get Maddie to fact check that one for us. Uh, I've heard that too, because I also hear like uh, trees, there is a form of communication between like... Uh, Some mycelium, right? Between... Uh, plants the hmm. fungal connections between the trees that I don't know but I do know like there has to be some sort of communication because like uh, like they've done studies where uh, where they would have trees go around and they would like uh, uh, withhold resources for some and that some of the trees or some of the plant life would um, relinquish some of its resources to the one that's being starved but only if it's like closely related to uh, to the to itself interesting and interesting. somehow it knows that it's yeah. related i actually heard and uh, i don't know about the fact checking on this either but that there is a way for plants to communicate with each other and that plants in the wild communicate more than you know plants that would be grown on a farm for example oh really like uh, farmed plants are they've uh -huh. lost some of that abilities yeah that's interesting yeah it is interesting all right, so are you ready? Here we go. What does a dolphin say when he's confused? Or when it's confused? Sorry about that. <laughs> eh. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were trying to answer the question. <laughs> Am I right? No. Oh. <laughs> can, can you please be more Pacific? Oh. <laughs> oh. All right. I could say that right now. I work in an elementary school, you know. Could be doing this all day long. Are there no dolphins in the Atlantic? <laughs> Could you be more Pacific? Uh -huh. <laughs> it also sounds like, could you be more Pacific? Like, it's like, it's clearly that's a West Coast. <laughs> like the, the Chandler Bing, could you be anywhere? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, there you go. Thank you for that. That's what I meant. Oh, this is a nice chat. Congratulations on the successful dive. We've been tagging along all day. So nice. Thank yeah. you for joining us. Coming in south. Do do do. Do 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 do. Shrimp. Maybe. Oh, did we get another shrimp? Oh, yep. Nope, gone. I count it. Count it. Did you count it? It was yep. a red dot. Could have been a shrimp. Yeah, we'll count it. We were at 25 already, Jane. I think we're at 26 now. Well. Yeah. We were very busy when we saw the last one. It was in the threads of the sponge. I think I counted that one. Oh, you did? I thought so. Well, then we'll Maybe give not. ourselves an extra. For good behavior. Yes, we are ascending at 1,820 meters. It always feels like it goes a little bit faster going up, huh? Well, we are shallower. True, that's right. It's not as far. It's also not midnight. 18 right. meters. <laughs> Eight. Da -da. It's like someone's sweeping. What? Sweeping, maybe? Oh. It was outside. I thought it was inside. It sounded like a wood cushion. <laughs> there was a very interesting oh. noise over there. Yes, outside. It sounded like a weed eater. A weed eater? A weed eater. A weed eater. 
What? <laughs> My weed eater sounds like a two-stroke engine. <laughs> well, we know we don't have that out here, so. Yeah, weed whacker. Oh, sorry. Weed whacker, sure. <laughs> weed whacker, weed eater, same thing. Well, does it eat it and like throws it alone? Right? Maybe it depends on where you live, what you better. call it. Oh, yeah, no problem. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Actually, I can give you these sample sheets in two minutes. You can go set up the lab. All right. Yeah, got work to do. Just realized something. And zero the buys. What's our ascent rate or twenty or so? You're off us, yeah. So it's saying about 90 minutes, is that accurate? Sounds about right. Yep. Sorry, my mic was muted. Uh, yes, we're just under 20 meters a minute. 19.9, it says. We'll keep our eyes out for different things. I'm coming up as fast as I can. Column. So get there when we get there. I think one of the other teams that was in Palmyra, they saw sharks as they were coming up. Oh, interesting question here in the chat. How are the stars out there at night? Ooh. Has anybody seen the stars lately? Last night was good. Was it? We were hoping to see some meteor showers tonight, possibly. Was, tomorrow was that night, tonight with the Perseids. I saw a yeah. shooting star the other night. Hi, Issa. It is that time of year, isn't it? Yeah. You're welcome. I find that there's a lot of light pollution from the ship. Yeah. Yeah. The ship turned off its lights that you see yeah. way more stars. It'd be so much more dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like to live dangerously. <laughs> Just so I could see the stars. This one's good at going out in the Navy because they turn off all the lights. Right. Um. So for anybody interested, I'll give a little summary of what we collected. Yeah. It's quite a lot. Sure. Uh, we have one black coral sample. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight octocoral samples. Wow. Um, plus, there may actually might actually be one or two more that are still on rocks. So I didn't count those separately. But we have seven rock samples from all up and down the seamount. Seven rock samples, yep. that's great. Two sponges, at least one associate. I guess we tried to collect a few squat lobsters that swam off of their hosts. Um, six Niskin water samples, two sediment cores, one scoop core, which includes some sediment and some small pebbles, and one fossilized whalebone. Oh, cool. Which is pretty cool. Yeah, a partridge in the pear tree. It's just it was a, one a successful bone dive. By itself. Looks like it's like a full load. A whale bone? What'd you say? Yeah, it's they found one, just a bone, just one bone. They I don't know if it was one. A, a was it just like a bunch of? I don't know. I wasn't there. I feel like they would have told us if they found a skeleton. <laughs> yeah. We just have an entire whale skeleton on the ROV. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's not the first one. Like they've had it's another one. Stuffed it into the box. Yeah. <laughs> it's just draped over the top of Hercules. I want to come over a bit. We'll go further out. No, you're fine. Never mind. There we go. Oh, and of course we had 26 shrimp sightings. Yes. And that nice. is the partridge in the pear tree. And how many squat lobsters? I think of we sightings? saw three. We saw we, we a number. Saw a couple, yeah. There were some on the previous watch that I think they tried to collect on some Chrysogorgia yeah. that were too, too smart for us, I guess. Yeah. 
Are you smarter than a squat lobster? I was no. I was a little it's bit a outside show. of the room when we were doing the squat lobster talk. I couldn't hear through all of it. What are some, some fun facts you all learned about squat lobsters? I learned that a Yeti crab is technically a squat lobster. Oh. There's two major families, which I can't remember the <laughs> names of. Okay. Uh, one began with a C and one began with a G. I wonder if Paola's still on here. Maybe she can tell us. I'm sure she'll come up if she can hear us. <laughs> I'm just joking. She's probably asleep. She was downstairs in the lounge when I popped down for a moment. Everybody's still working on that puzzle. I'm uh, yeah. Got somebody in the chat saying there were two whale fossils, so maybe it was two separate pieces. On this day? That's what it was saying. Oh, really? They are everywhere. It's amazing. We found them a lot in Palmyra. Do we know about how old they are? Or we won't know until we get uh, Pretty get old. I mean, they're fossilized into rock, yeah. really. Yeah. All right, front row, you're getting a little quiet on me. Are you OK? <laughs> you can't talk sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> Can't talk. Sleeping. Uh, what? <laughs> I got lost in the abyss. Don't make me put up, pull out the fun game shows of the 90s again. <laughs> James, you were telling me the other day you really like music. What music would you put to Blue Water? Um, uh, I don't know. So I, would, I like to listen to rock when we're doing the ROV, especially Blue Water because it's boring. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? Look at those. Uh, those specs. It's amazing. Pink Floyd. <laughs> I, in my head, I hear that um, that hold music every time you're on the phone, the one that's like... Elevator Everyone knows what I'm talking about. How do you stay on the line? Your call is important to us. You know, the hold, mute, the hold song. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, no. We're losing a... We're losing oh, a push core. Oh, I see it coming up. Oh, oh. bummer. Okay, da, well... Da, da. Well, that happened. That was the one that I think had the broken handle, correct? Yes. It's yes. interesting because we're going up that that would have been pushed out. Oh, it's still... Is it still attached? <laughs> it's, uh, uh, no. No. <laughs> Never mind. There it goes. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Looks like you guys will have a little work to do on <laughs> push core handles. Mm -hmm. I can still see it. That's so crazy. What was Lita saying? They needed to be taped or something? Yeah, so what usually happens is like, uh, you know, because we have the plastic tube and then we got the handle construction going on and that it plugs into the top. And then before hose clamping it, there's usually like a layer or two of uh, electrical tape or something like that. Hmm. Uh, just to just to help with tightening it down and keep it in place to get that seal between the between I the must say it is nice to have a point of failure tube. on those things because if you're not putting it into the tube you know straight up and down it is easy to break the, the plastic yeah, yeah. Uh, um, so that having that you know if you pull straight up they come out yeah start to torque it a little bit and that one did break a little easier than I would have liked but having a break there is nice because you don't ruin the tube assuming this tube stays in the vehicle <laughs> and we right. can reuse it mm -hmm. why did it fly out I don't know actually that's a good question I'm thinking hold on let me let me ponder the physics here well it's it's at the bottom's closed, right? And we're going up, so maybe the water going in created turbulence. I was like, maybe. Oh, Lifted I'm it right stuff maybe, up. Maybe. There are holes at the bottom of the tube. Mm. Right, because they have to fill with water on the way down. Uh, yeah, so, so like there, there's a hole at the bottom of the tube. That way, if I take it out, there's easier to bring it out. So maybe so it's not going to allow a lot of flow. It's just like a, a pinhole, right? Yeah. 
well, bigger than a pinhole, a drill. You got water hole. pushing down this way. I don't know. I don't know. Probably the turbulence. Well, technically, you know, every action has a reaction, so technically every every force has an equal opposite force coming back. That hasn't been proven. <laughs> but you don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> I think we might have to pull out some improv here in a minute. Da -da -da -da. <laughs> I don't want to get straight down some of the stuff. Don't want to get any uh, DRM. Can't hear you. Whatever it is. It's fine. I'm just mumbling. <laughs> talking to myself? Yep, uh, talking to myself. That's what happens when you're on a blue water. Did you say you're talking to yourself talking to yourself? Yep, exactly. It's <laughs> getting good, good answers. I like to hear myself echo. <laughs> echo? So much blue. Technically? No. <laughs> <laughs> Just leave me in my happy place here. Okay. But we left my happy place about two week two weeks ago. <laughs> it's only been one. It's only been one week. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's been like it's been two, two it? nearly. It's, almost, it's like the 12th. 12th no, today, so Saturday. Saturday. Like two. No. No. Yesterday. no, 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 no. We, uh, yesterday. Saturday. Uh, yeah, I've been posting sunset pictures every night. So last night was day 10. <laughs> day 10 off On the, the water. Yeah. Off, off dock. Okay. Yeah, got it. That's it? <laughs> <laughs> I know. Is that it? <laughs> oh, we're having so much fun. Dive two. I'm very excited to be in the water, though. This is definitely yeah. much more exciting a little bit more of a dynamic experience you think <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I do I like stuff like this more. because it's like i'm able to be in the water but then i'm like not, not wet you know so wait i can only come up with so many excuses not to work on my dissertation ah, work right, right. when we're not diving <laughs> to, well try to help you with more <laughs> the Those challenge puzzles got to count yoga on the top deck have definitely been yeah a lot of fun i can slow down that's okay. I can speed up. Don't speed, like yeah, because I, mean, I can always go faster. You, okay. You're the one that yeah, needs to. I mean, um, did he just Travis call you said slow? max thirty, and we're only going twenty-five. So <laughs> I would say yeah, you match fifteen thirty. You don't match me. I match you. Yeah. Okay. Michael, do you want to play the? Number game. <laughs> wow, that is. Uh, we have an hour. We do have an hour. Uh, I don't know. What if you don't know how to count? <laughs> Thirty-seven. <laughs> <laughs> that's that where it starts. No. <laughs> you start at one. <laughs> oh. So Ash Ashley, are um, <laughs> comments still Seven. open from general public, or did you turn those off? No, I've got them on still. So. Nice. Uh, there are no more jokes on the uh, on the on the chat. No more like quality top grade. Ready for the uh, ready for the Apollo jokes. You have Apollo jokes. I said ready for the Apollo, like the theater, the Apollo theater. Oh. Come on, sure. But do you also seriously not want to play the number game with me? Uh, <laughs> one. <laughs> one, you know you want to do it. I'm too hungry. Aww. All right. Well, we played waffles and pancakes the other day, so. You played waffles and pancakes? How do you, you know? What we is play, that? We played oh. the, we took a poll. We took the poll. Everybody yeah. voted for waffles, remember? I was like, how do you play waffles and pancakes? <laughs> that sounds like, that's a weird <laughs> sounding <laughs> game. <laughs> you throw waffles and pancakes at each other. <laughs> Which ones are better Frisbees? Ooh, good question. Waffles or pancakes? Waffles or pancakes? I think a pancake would pancake. be a better frisbee. No, actually, oh, waffle. waffle. Waffles because got more waffles. structure. They, yeah, they, they're structured. I like an ego waffle? Like an ego, yeah. I actually cannot throw a frisbee at all, so I think you guys are probably <laughs> you have choose a better rock. Yeah. I used to love throwing. <laughs> like me and my friend would always just kind of like try to do tricks and stuff uh, when we were younger. 
broke a lot of windows. <laughs> <laughs> but it was always like that that type of speed. It's always comedic, right? So it's like that type of speed where it's like going just fast enough where you can't run, and it's going just out of your reach, like out of your jump reach, you know? And then it like shatters into the room your great grandmother's <laughs> in. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> Shouldn't have been sitting there. It was like 90. <laughs> and then uh, yeah, started yelling Spanish obscenities. Uh-oh. Those were the days. The good old days. <laughs> when you're being cursed at in Spanish. You know what boggles my mind? Like every time I see it. Boomerangs. See what? Boomerangs. Oh, yeah. I've, I've like, never thrown one. Uh, I... I did, and it blew my mind. Did it work? Yeah. No way. Yes, it does. It's well, I know on. they work. <laughs> <laughs> but you stood in one place, and it just came back to you. It came back to me. Like, obviously, like, there's a trick for it to come back to you, like, in the same exact spot. Um, but it does, like, make its way back in the direction of which you've thrown it. You do that trick with the Frisbee? It <laughs> comes right back at you? I've never done that. Before. It's more of an accident, really. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, boomerangs are crazy. Jane is a coral specialist. What of the specimens are you most excited to take a closer look at? Well, I wouldn't say that I'm a specialist in terms of taxonomy. Um, I more so study the ecology and the drivers that allow corals to exist down there. Um, but I am actually very excited to see that sponge that we fought very hard to win. Yeah. Um, hopefully it's still intact and we can get a nice nice uh, view of its spicules and its patterns. And the last sponge on the last dive we collected I thought was very, very aesthetically pretty. Yeah, I liked that one too. That one didn't make a run for it though. Yeah, <laughs> true. Yeah, I'm gonna keep my hopes uh, tempered here. Um, what else did we get? We had I think a bubblegum coral. There was a bubblegum coral that oh, nice. I was not awake for when it was sampled, but I'd be... Oh, and of course the whalebone. They said that was a beaked whale, right? Oh, I don't know. I'm still intrigued by this whalebone. So they found a boat with just one whalebone, a bone of a whale by itself. Fossilized. Nothing I else was, around it. Just no asleep. other bones. Just uh, yeah. uh, a whalebone. It might be fossilized. Yeah, um, fossilized. The rostrum of these big whales is like, I don't know, it's like their nose. And it's very uh, identifiable on the seafloor. So. I'm but not a specialist. I just would have thought that there'd be other, well, if a whale fall goes down together, yeah, it would be more than one bone that fossilized, but maybe it was moved by something. I don't know. I think it depends on the conditions too, right? Yeah. Might have to slow down a little bit. Yeah. Is the time to surface ETA on the HERC um, screen, is that accurate? It's yep. 55 uh, minutes? Yeah. Cool. It is in uh, real time. It's, uh, if we were to continue ascending at 25 meters a minute. Whoa. Whoa. I wonder who gets the fossilized whalebone. Is it the rock team or the bio team? Uh -huh, that's a good that's question. A good, that's Dibs. a very good question. Dibs, I call Dibs. Oh, yeah, the ROV team found it, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what are you going to do with it? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Make a necklace out of it? <laughs> you don't need to know. Yeah. It'd be a big necklace. We have, we have things. That was a debatable thing. I believe they went back to URI as a... You are right for the uh, win. Geological sample, but Meow. that's because Adam Sewell was on the, oh, the chief nothing. scientist on the last leg. So Rob can decide, maybe. Rob and Steve can arm wrestle. No, you don't want to put your fate in Rob's hands. <laughs> <laughs> what whale bone? <laughs> <laughs> whale what? There's no whale bone. Whales don't have bones. <laughs> They're too big for bones. They get crushed. Yeah. It's science. Everyone knows that whales with bones are freshwater. 
<laughs> or fresh water, is that what yeah. you said? Yeah, that makes sense. Ashley, you got a tough crowd here for your, I know. your <laughs> audience. <laughs> just don't listen to them. Like the we're the hecklers. I, I kind of just checked out so I could research back. some beaked whales information, <laughs> but yeah, no, I think we do we do a pretty good job considering it's the midnight to four shift too. Right. Wait, what's going on? Well, we make up so many facts. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah, you're very confident. Like <laughs> that's, that's the key. <laughs> that's the key thing. <laughs> the key. Oh yeah, that's the way it is. <laughs> we just don't test them. We just, yeah, just don't test my theories. <laughs> we let someone else do that. We come up with the ideas. <laughs> that's right. Do not fact check me. So we have a comment here on another cruise. It was mentioned that the particular bone is more dense or does not deteriorate like the other bones of the whale. Oh. Oh. So that one is usually the one piece that is found fossilized laying on the seafloor. Oh, Very cool. cool. Do we know what is part of the whale that is? What bone? It's, what bone? It's, like it's so their it's the beak part, right? Yeah, yeah. rostrum. I I think. Rostrum. Cool. Whatever. What they, what they said. What they said. Yeah. I kind of. Do you all remember that sea sponge that we the encrusted one that we saw the sure. last dive? Yeah, a week ago. The decayed one. Yep. Yep. It, that's what I thought that was at first for just a little bit. Oh, yeah, I can, yeah, I can, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that, I remember. There might be a resemblance there. Wow, somehow I feel more tired on the daytime shift, actually, <laughs> than the nighttime shift. <laughs> it's because well, you're not excited to sleep. No, it's less coffee. Oh. You, know? you drink coffee at midnight? Uh, yeah, it was a mistake. I had oh. like a double shot of espresso. Were you able to go to sleep after the, after uh, the watch? Yes, eventually, but not right yeah. away. Yeah, we can go on three hours of sleep, right? <laughs> yeah, I think I got maybe six. Oh, nice. I have the feeling of like not wanting to relinquish my shift when we're in the middle of the dive, though. When we had to hand it over last night, oh, yeah, that night, was I hard was like, last no. night, wasn't it? That's how it goes. <laughs> it's like we had spent all that time in blue water and then yeah. on the seafloor, and then it was right really away. starting Come to get on, interesting. Yeah. 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 You can't can't get hopeful on a blue water. Mm -hmm. And we're at 1,294 meters. 1,294 meters. Approximate time of surface is about 54 minutes right now. And if you stay along around long enough, we might play Name That Tune. <laughs> oh, man. Very linear. I like it. Yeah. So that's three quarters of economic growth. SPL, this is Data Lab. ROV, if you're able to, could you cycle power to the cell camera, not the Triclops, the other one? Yeah. You got it? Many thanks. One last chance to see if it talks to us this dive. You got it. All right, it's currently on. Model, right. You got it. Waiting 10 seconds to turn it back on. It is coming back on. I think they're sleeping. Be very, very quiet. Don't say anything. <laughs> Buck, okay, We're all busy on our devices. <laughs> <laughs> I'm back here taking notes. 
working, Jane? Well, just summarizing the watch. So part of the job that we do after we do these dives as science communication fellows is to look at all the still images that, you, that we've collected. I think last time we had about 1,500. Pulled them all together and wow. pick the best ones. We have a question in the chat. What's the last book or song that you read or listened to? Ooh. There's a lot of reading going on on the boat right now. I just read a good book about, uh, well, it was a novel called Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow, which is, although it's a Shakespeare reference, it's actually about two video game designers, but it's a very nice novel. I really liked it. Five out of five on Goodreads. Nice. Well, I mean, that's what I gave it. That's not what it has on Goodreads. I'm not sure what it has. Um, I like to read uh, restaurant menus. <laughs> <laughs> Beer lists. Yeah, you come a lot across a lot of those on the ship. <laughs> yep. Are you making it's your never own made menu to order, every though. night? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just make my own. <laughs> I look, choose. Look them up on the internet and <laughs> size. <laughs> <laughs> the avocado at lunch was a lot of fun, though. That was. That was good guacamole. Mm -hmm. I had some tortilla chips stashed away down downstairs that I pulled out. Had myself a little fiesta. It was fun. Okay, what did we watch, though, recently? We watched Jurassic Park, thanks to James, and also yeah. Shaun of the Dead. That's true. I can't remember the, la the name of the book that I read. Command and Control. What's that about? It is about the, uh, it is a, I think it's a either a, a Pulitzer Prize winner or uh, or nominated Pulitzer Prize winner. And uh, it's about all the, t all the declassified um, nuclear incidences in the U.S. and how mm. much we almost, it's very, it's pretty dark, like in the sense of like how close we came to total Nuclear war, uh, and like stuff like that, and like uh, just like U.S. policies, and then uh, uh, and it does a, he does a good job of uh, explaining kind of like the the zeitgeist at the time uh, in our handling of uh, just the whole program from like its inception to maybe late 80s, early 90s. Still no comments to the still cam, so we might have to have some words with it once it's on deck. Uh -oh. <laughs> Give it a stern talking to. Uh, I could think of like two words. Why? Mm -hmm. That's only one. And <laughs> <laughs> waiting for the second. <laughs> Did you count the question mark as a word? Maybe. <laughs> We have a question here. Can we turn on the telemetry for the broadcast? Panos, is that possible or no? Uh, is that an, I don't know if that's a nest thing. Uh, is that a so what? They were wanting to see the ascent rate in the depth at home. Oh, oh is there no overlay? I'm not sure. I thought there was an overlay possible. Mike, do you know which PC is? I have no idea. Sorry, I'm new Hold here. On. You could look at uh, her GUI, probably, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, if you want to. It's called uh, the her GUI. I don't know what else. Like more of a. It's uh, a source PC, right? For those playing the home game, we're ascending at 22 meters a minute, no. and our current depth is 1,148 meters. For just a second, I was like, "Who is that?" <laughs> then I realized it was James. <laughs> Here's a fun yeah. question. So what would be the best Halloween costume, deep sea Halloween uh -huh. costume? Oh, I like this one. I was a jellyfish when I was a small child. Nice. I think we made it out of PVC pipe and <laughs> crepe paper or something. I was so wide that I didn't fit in the halls of the haunted house. <laughs> <laughs> I can't put my tentacles down. <laughs> Thanks to my mom for making that for me by hand. Oh, were they like pool noodles? No, I think it was like rubber tubing that oh she like made this big frame. It was oh, very elaborate. Amazing. Yeah, I've never had any sea.
costumes before, but that one sounds pretty fantastic. Might have to use that one. I dressed up like a snorkeler once, but that's just because it was easy to put the yeah. <laughs> snorkel on. <laughs> Wrapped a blue tablecloth around my waist, and I was good to go. Dwight, I take it you haven't dressed up like a sea creature for Halloween before? No, <laughs> I haven't. Um, I've been on this ship for Halloween a couple times. Oh, really? Nice. Do you guys do anything for it? Yeah, some people dress up. It's hard to find it. You have to like make your own costume, you know. <laughs> make it, make them out of like one euro is paper be plates the, uh, and <laughs> the um, styrofoam cup. These are my sclerites. I swear. Styrofoam cup. <laughs> yeah. Dwight's dressed up as Pikachu before. I guess. Pikachu. I have been Pikachu too. I did have to wear the Pikachu costume once. <laughs> but we don't talk about that. <laughs> I think we should. Don't talk about it. We I don't think we should about talk about it more. Is there <laughs> evidence of this? <laughs> are there pictures? Uh, there better not be. What does the Pikachu <laughs> costume look like? Is it yellow? Yeah. It oh is. no, I think it's still. Is a that why there's a drawing of a Pikachu over the board? In the oh, mess? Oh, probably. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a lot Mystery of a lot of people solved. have worn this costume. It's it oh, lingers. Right. Samantha has it. If you're interested. But it I smells really good. <laughs> I think I found it today. Actually, I was looking for a prize for our. <laughs> you found the Pikachu outfit. I, I found some. And sort you you didn't want to share <laughs> this information. I, I thought it was a banana costume. Oh. I just didn't know what it was. Oh, that would be bad luck. <laughs> True. That would be really bad. Don't dress up like a banana on the boat. It'd be kind of fun to dress up like a squat lobster. Oh, yeah, that would be fun. We know the dance moves already. One of my buddies in high school dressed up as a seahorse, but not like a seahorse. He's like riding the seahorse. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> a seahorse really equestrian. Good. Yeah, seahorse nice. equestrian. What was the seahorse made out of? Um, he had it was it was inflatable. Oh, I gotta cool. find I gotta find a picture of it. It had a little pump and it like inflated the thing and he was just walking, but it looked like he was riding a seahorse as he walked. Like it was it was really yeah. funny. So it was really good. Like, like chocobo. Yeah, fake legs. Yeah, yeah, it had the fake legs and like nice. yeah. <laughs> And then the next year he did the same thing, but he was like Mother Goose, and it looked like he was riding a goose. Oh, <laughs> and he had fine. like a bonnet. It was really good. It's really funny. Is there still a GSO Halloween party? Um, I'm not technically part of GSO, so. No, you're not. But oh, that's right. You're in. Yeah. The, you're, I've got but my last grad school, we would always have big yeah. uh, Halloween bashes. Yeah. And almost everyone went sea creature themed, so there was a lot of variety. Good question, Jane. I like it. The yeah, now I'm starting to think minutes. about what I want to be for Halloween this year. Yeah. Oh, man. A rock. <laughs> That's a good deep sea oh, creature. Oh, I, will, I will say that uh, my... Uh, one of my oldest friends, he's getting married. Uh, two of my oldest friends are getting married, I should say. Uh, and they're getting married on uh, in October. But their um, their whole thing is like a like a quasi masquerade theming, so you can get all dressed Ooh. up and stuff. Nice. But it's like a formal dress up. Cool. So I'm gonna go with my sugar skull uh, and like a mariachi. Yes. Uh, are cool. you gonna do the? Sorry. The makeup and the painting and stuff? Or? I'm going to try. You know. Nice. It's been a while since I've done that. And then uh, I just need to find a new suit because, you know, I'm not 23 anymore. <laughs> uh, were, you a, were you in a mariachi band? No, it's just what it was just like one of those suits you like, kind of have to have. Like it's one of those things I wanted to have and I had it. <laughs> I mean, yes. I was an actual bullfighter. <laughs> I'm not alone. Some of my favorite music, so I'm going to ask you to sing it if you tell me yes. <laughs> um. What about you, Panos? Do they celebrate Halloween in Greece or anything similar? Yes, yes. Oh, yes, it's a, it's a similar, but yeah, it's... Big parties and a Big lot of party? fun. Yeah. 
Do you dress up or no? Yeah. Yes, yes, I do. And my kids are making fun of me. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they don't get it. I think that's just part of the job, right? Is being a parent. Yeah. They're just jealous. Sign on for people to make fun of you the rest of your life. <laughs> exactly. Then you slow down. Halloween's great with kids, though. You get to take all their candy. Yeah. I didn't say that. <laughs> no, I just put my girls to bed and then I sneak into the closet. Yeah, because I always hear that, like, when I was growing up, I always heard the, like, my grandparents and my mom just like, so what do we get? I'm like, what do you mean what do you get? I had to go around. <laughs> one for you, one for me. I can't do and it. Then you go back to your stash the next day and you realize half of it's gone. You're like, hmm. <laughs> Somebody got into There's my a candy. mouse in my candy. <laughs> I'm not, a fan, I'm not a big fan of like chocolates, like uh, Halloween chocolates. Like, Did like you just say you don't like chocolate? That's the most ridiculous <laughs> thing I've ever heard you <laughs> I say. I'm, I'm, like, what? Not a, I'm not a big fan of chocolate. <laughs> I'm a fan of like dark chocolate sometimes, but yeah, like, that's the worst type of chocolate. No, it's that not. That is the chocolate. That's like how that what that is what chocolate is. No, I gotta, you you gotta dilute it with dark, milk and, and sugar. Sometimes like it's <laughs> quasi, it's like crumbles a bit, <laughs> and then it's the stuff that you put into your like you know. Basically Mexican chocolate. That's I like can see why you don't like chocolate. So when you go trick or treating no and somebody tries to hand you a Snickers, you're like, no, thank you. Nah, I'm not for it. It's too sweet for me now. Clearly hangry. I can't. I can't do. All right, you'll help me make sure I answer this question right. What zone of the ocean are we exploring today? The benthic is that is what that a zone? zone? Where we were, yeah. So seafloor is benthic generally, yeah. um, just regardless of the substrate. I think that's why I'm not reading any books right now. I've learned so much in like yeah. two weeks. <laughs> and now we're in the pelagic zone, the mesopelagic. Mm. Sounds yeah. like you made that up. Pelagic? I guess we were yeah. in the bathy pelagic. Bathy pelagic, right. Bathy pelagic. Yeah. Bathy, bathy. <laughs> that's another one. That's one. a coral. Yeah, that's one of, one of my funny ones that I like to hear. So we're like, at uh, 971 meters right now. What was the other one, was the other one that uh, we liked? Yeah, Finishing rhymes. up our dive. I have no idea what you're talking uh, about. Fun na funny name. I'm just not even listening Animal to creatures. you two anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Are we still talking about chocolate up there? No. Oh, I mean, sorry. We can't, uh, well, kind of. <laughs> no. All right. What do you all? What's your vote? Tacos, spaghetti, or sushi? Oh, sushi. All right. Tacos. 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 So if we're talking about tacos, are we talking about like the real tacos? I mean, what other kind of tacos are there? <laughs> <laughs> There's definitely some fake tacos. Do you Choco mean, like, tacos? Gummy tacos? Are we talking about like street Actually, tacos? Yeah. Where we are, where are we getting this food? Because if you're in Vancouver, there are no good tacos. Mm. So it's definitely sushi. Let's just say if you're you in LA. I'd say probably a taco. Tacos. Okay. So Vancouver, we're gonna go out for sushi. Great sushi place. California, probably tacos, right? Oh yeah. No, England will go for tacos. lobster. Lobster. Nice. Lobster tacos? Wicked good lobster. And if you come to Kentucky, we'll give you some fried chicken. <laughs> fried chicken tacos? Oh, my God. No. I have that down the street. Maybe. Oh, uh, you could taco anything. That is true. Yeah. I don't, like, you know, growing up, I didn't even have, I didn't even use utensils until I was, like, 17. <laughs> <laughs> Grab it into tortillas. It was, it, was it was just tortillas. <laughs> just, just tortillas. Aww. I'm like nostalgic for that. That's like what I would like to do. <laughs> just tortilla. Eat, eat just tortilla. Can I just eat tortilla? Can I just get rid of all of my silverware and just eat with tortillas all the time? Yeah, that's what I do. And then when I go out into the world and have to be civilized. I don't know if I would want to eat spaghetti with a tortilla though. Oh, uh, you're missing out. <laughs> <laughs> you just gotta get a bigger tortilla. All right, so we're asking, is that the, is it Hadel's zone? How, how do you pronounce it? Hadel's pretty deep. Yep. That's, we, we're not quite going to those depths. Yeah. Probably below 6,000 meters or something like that. Okay. So we were about half that. Yeah. What is the, uh, I'm assuming, real quick, just by listening, that uh, these are like, uh, these names are for like different depth zones 
Uh, well, what, what's the purpose of those like names of the well, like what makes them different? How do you distinguish between these different yeah, zones? Yeah, you have the different zones, like other than just like, you know, meters and meters and uh, yeah. different different animals that live there. Okay. I think yeah. like a different. Uh, okay. Yeah. And then between epipelagic and mesopelagic, it's also light penetration. Mm. Okay, 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 okay. Oxygen levels, maybe. Oxygen levels, yep. Cool, cool. All right. I'm getting a sense. It's arbitrary. They spin a wheel. <laughs> and they're like, so oh, that does feel arbitrary this, sometimes. Oh, and thick goes up to 25 That's what I'm saying. Like, I'm trying to decide these words. <laughs> no, like, it's a little bit of like, what does this mean? sea floor shape, too. So, you know, you have the trenches, which are, will be the hadal zone. And then you have the, like, I don't know. Um, Seamount area, which they jump I'm going to uh, slow down. Because we're coming up we're and we're going to be, I'm trying to time it. We could also just hold at three. At 50. Yeah, oh, yeah. wow, we. We're, we're in no rush to come back. We're doing good, though, 879 meters. Uh, time to surface does jump around a lot. Jump yeah. Around. Oh, it says 56 minutes. What? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> jump, jump around. You can get right out of here. Uh-oh, we have a vote for garlic tortilla in the chat. Garlic tortilla? Mm -hmm. Garlic naan I'm on board with. Oh, yeah. I'm down with garlic naan. I've never had garlic tortilla. Garlic tortilla. I'm not a big fan of flour tortillas. You're not or you are? I am not. Yeah. Corn's better. Yeah. Corn's a lot better. Sometimes I'll have, like, the only time I use, like, flour tortillas is for, like, a, like when I'm when I'm making quesadillas. Your utensils something. are dirty? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, uh, this is all I got. It's all you have left, so you use your tortilla. Uh. So we have a question about when the next dive will be, and we are updating um, dive alerts in on both Instagram and on Twitter, and we will also be updating the website as soon as we know when we will be diving again. Uh, James, what different like oceans have you like done dives, and which one do you prefer? I have been, I have dove in the Arctic, I have dove Ooh. in the Pacific, and I have dove in the Atlantic. Oh. It is on my bucket list to dive in all seven. Okay. That's cool. Or whatever. Do you have a preference? Like, who would you like more, most memorable? Most recently, I guess the Titanic. Oh. That whole Ocean Gate thing that was, you know, pretty memorable. Oh. Um, so you got to see it? Did you uh, Did you wind up going to that area? Yeah, we did got to. See yeah, we did get to see it. Yeah, I got to fly around the bow. Oh, wow, wow, cool. It was really cool. And then what? W is that what you were doing in the Arctic? Sorry? Is that what you were doing in the Arctic, you were saying? Uh, the Arctic, they were doing, um, um, they were researching how the ice is melting from underneath, like from uh. the sea floor, or from the, the water side, um, as opposed to from the atmospheric side. Both fronts. Dang. There's a term for it. I can't remember. So it was an ROV just going down underneath? Yeah, it was just like, we like, pl it was a small, um, um, eyeball class and we just did kind of just threw a hole in the ice kind of thing and then you fly along the, the surface wow. oh. and they were just looking at things I don't know. is that tethered in some way or is that just like a because you're tethered tether. you're on the surface you get it's, it's neutrally buoyant okay so just kind of they're not worried about it those things are those tethers like you can wrap them in a knot and like you just undo it you get telemetry back and there you go <laughs> it's fine Cool. We also do ship inspections up there, hull inspections. Let's see. I think I've usually done by divers, but when it's really cold, they don't have a lot of time in the water. I spent a lot of time on the in the Pacific, various places in the Pacific. I've gone through the Indian cool. Ocean a little bit. Yeah, yeah, mainly, uh, and then like kind of obviously the uh, up in the Gulf, the Middle East.
Not as much stuff in the water column as on the descent. Yep. Yet. When would, if yeah, surprisingly, nothing. If there were, you know, sharks or any other kind of fish like that, would would we see them at a certain depth? That were. When should we start looking for something like that? We can look throughout, but um, what's? I wonder what the visibility is. Do you guys know what the? Well, I guess you can see the length of the lasers, so pretty good. Well, that, that's kind of deceiving because I think that wavelength of light penetrates the water better than is the, that right? Than, than just just white. Um, that's really hard to say. Yeah. I mean, we can see Argus, or sorry, we can see Herc very clearly through uh, the Camlers in Atalanta, and it's you know upwards of 30 meters away. Okay. So I think the last team saw some oceanic white tips, and it's saying that they can be anywhere from 200 to 1,000 meters. What? Uh, we are currently at 760. At Palmyra, every time we recovered the ROVs, we saw oceanic white tips. That's where they were. Yeah. yeah. That that was the expedition before this one, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, two before, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Look at, like, the, the ship is just chilling, right? Meanwhile, we're, like, all over. <laughs> <laughs> So when we were going down last night, um, I think our oxygen minimum zone was around 385 meters. We'll see if it's still in the same spot. Can you tell us more about that? What does that mean? So there's a part in the water column kind of close to where you start losing light altogether, mm -hmm. um, where the oxygen concentration is at its lowest in the water column um, due to all the little organisms basically eating up all of the things, metabolizing a lot, and so kind of consuming survival. all of the oxygen. Yeah, mm -hmm. just yep. trying to survive, yeah. I don't, I'm not sure what's on the left-hand side of Hercules, but I keep thinking it's something coming around the corner. <laughs> it's probably the, the line, that little, that little the thing knife. that just mm -hmm. keeps coming into the screen. Yeah. <laughs> It's on a, it's a, it's part of the knife. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I keep thinking it's a fish. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yes. Oh. If we believe hard enough. There was a little fish. I know. As you said that. Man, bubble cam just looks like straight up. All right, we passed 700 meters, you guys. I'm going to go help on deck. All right. Thank you for a great watch. Yay. And we'll see. Check you later. All right, thank you. We got a final thank shrimp you. for the shrimp count. It's not the final oh, they, one. We're going to oh, see a bunch more. Oh, there's another one. Okay, a penultimate shrimp for the shrimp count. I think that's 27, right? Penultimate. Oh, penultimate. I like that word, penultimate. So we have a question about the waves on the surface. We know there's waves on the surface, but do they extend underneath? To a degree, yes. Um, Gosh, I used to study waves a little bit. Do they what? Sorry, what was the question? Do they extend? So, like, if you're, if Hercules is underwater, is the I guess we would call it current, right? Uh, underneath. Yeah. In coastal systems, it's a bit different because you almost have these like cells that you can track on top of each other. They do these kind of sinusoidal motions all the way down to the depth. 
Um, but in the deep sea, I think things are much more driven by large ocean currents, mm. as opposed to like wind waves that you might see on the coast. What's up? No. At least at depth, anyway. Yeah. What is the little what thing? He's trying thing? so hard. <laughs> There's so much effort there. <laughs> oh, we were talking about those last night. The siphon. What are they Siphonophores? Called? Siphonophores, yeah. Sometimes it feels like three days ago, but it was just. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not seeing any siphonophores at the moment. I thought I saw something trickle down over there on the left. Oh, yeah, could have been. Uh, let's see if we could see what happens. What's that over there on the left? Uh, salp, maybe? Something. Weird. There it goes. Hard to see. It wasn't quite in focus. It kind of looked like a rock, but maybe I'm just... Uh, like <laughs> I would one say it's line. something gelatinous, whatever it is. Six hundred and fifty-five meters. Our estimated time to surface is 27 minutes. So already between bottom depth and where we are now, the temperature has risen about four degrees. So it was two, it's now six. So oh. tripled in temperature, in case that's of interest to anybody. Yeah. Sounds like everyone's preparing on deck for Hercules' arrival in at Atlanta. Kind of feels nice to be able to start and finish this dive, huh? Yes. A full circle. Yep. I would have liked to see the Chana Cops on the watch after hours, though. Yeah, that one was nice. Speaking of temperature, ROV, could you secure power to the Tricos camera when you're able? A firm. Securing Triclops. Oh. It, it is off. Wonderful, thank you. These glasses help a lot, man. Yeah, they do. I, I didn't have to rub my eyes once. They're stuff. Yeah. yeah. I didn't they were they, a game changer for me. Yeah. And you look smarter, too. Hmm? And you look smarter. No, oh, that's right, yeah. <laughs> I feel smarter. <laughs> oh, shrimp, see, told you it wasn't our last one. Oh, nice. 28. We're going to break 30. I can feel it. 31. Oh, shrimps. Um, like what? Oh, because I'm above you. Okay, I'll slow down. comes our snow globe. So you mentioned that you had seen something kind of in the foreground of the camera that you weren't sure quite what it was. Mm -hmm. um, I had mentioned that it could be a salp. I don't know. I didn't get a good enough look at it to see if, if that was the case, but um, so I just wanted to mention something that's kind of a, a paradigm in deep sea ecology is this idea of food limitation in the deep sea. And they were finding that despite all these models saying how all of the organic material in the water column would be consumed before it reached certain depths, they were still finding a lot of organic content in certain habitats. Oh, and they were able to resolve that by finding out that it was actually these large gelatinous blob animals like salps and things like that that actually capture a bunch of uh, organic material as they sink 
And so it was basically accounting for a large portion of the or organic material that makes it to depth without, um, you know, kind of outside of the models because you don't necessarily think of individual yeah. gelatinous blobs as being that much <laughs> of a driver, but it's actually a huge part of the biological pump. That's really interesting. So they're, are, are they ingesting that or are they just kind of bringing it down with them on the surface? They're, they, uh, yeah, so kind of both. They um, have this kind of mucousy membrane and they'll catch all of this stuff. It basically sticks to them. And then if they sink, um, I mean, the idea of the having that mucus in the first place is to consume that organic content themselves, but not every organism survives. And so yeah. as it sinks to the bottom of the seafloor, it brings with it all of this stuff on the way down. So actually accounts for huge fluxes of organic material and, the salps and inorganic material. Uh, we can salps are one of them. I can't remember some of the others, but but we can see salps, right? Like mm -hmm. with our yeah, yeah. Some of them make those really long chains, and they yeah. basically pump water through their bodies. Very cool animals. Yeah, it's quite interesting. So originally, we would have thought that there wasn't enough of a food source down there, and now exactly. And there's, I mean, there's other other things that weren't accounted for as well, like yeah. hydrodynamic uh, processes that advect material from one source to another very directly or very efficiently. Um, but this was one of those things that was kind of outside of the initial models yeah. that helped us understand how certain ha uh, animals in the deep sea can survive because they have these little pulses of high new high content organic f food material down to them every once in a while. That's kind of a boomer bust yeah. economy, <laughs> food economy. Like right when you thought you weren't going to be able to eat. Five hundred and thirty nine meters. Whoa, Whoa look that? at that. Ooh. It's an Atalanta. I can't do anything about that. Oh, I wonder if I can capture that. That was cool. That's speaking of salps, is that what that is? I'm not is that what that sure is? exactly what that is. Might be some sort of. I don't know. I don't know. Oxygen concentrations are plummeting. Four hundred and ninety meters. Oh, there was something else right there. Like a jelly. A jelly? Some huh. sort of jelly. Something tasty. Hmm. Looks like Hercules has a couple little friends in the front too.
Front row, are you all still awake? Yes. We're almost there. Are you? I am. Okay, cool. <laughs> Me too. Do, 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 do. What? Yeah, so... We are coming up on 432 meters. It's interesting because the oh. <laughs> time to surface always stays about the same. I think I know who asked that question about the, uh, the oxygen minimum zone. Nice. <laughs> Got some people chiming What's in from that? home. What is that noise? Oh, is that the power washing again? Oh. <laughs> They're power washing the outside of the van. We're starting to see some movement back on the like deck. Doing yard work out there. Oh, that weed eater. <laughs> that might have been what we were hearing earlier. It looks like we've got people getting in position, preparing to recover. Hercules and Atalanta after successful exploration Woo. of the unnamed seamount. We'll call it Bob. The unnamed seamount Bob. That would give certain people a lot of satisfaction. Yeah, lots of people <laughs> would love that. <laughs> Looks like we still have a 17 minute ETS. It's always so fun to watch all the teamwork that happens. Everything's very carefully orchestrated to make sure we're safe. And that Hercules is safe. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, did you say something? Was that a question to the front row? Was that for me? I was just talking. Oh, okay, okay. I, wasn't, I heard Hercules and then I thought there was a question. No, we were just talking about how everybody makes sure that they're ready and works together and knows exactly what they need to do when Hercules comes up. Is there anything that the pilots have to do for recovery or? Uh, yes. So uh, usually I relinquish control of the winch and then uh, uh, the Herc pilot will uh, maintain a like a lead uh, a lead on the uh, on uh, Atalanta as it's getting put onto deck. Try to keep it as steady as possible, uh, given the sea state. Uh, once Atalanta's on deck, uh, the Herc pilot will then have to arc over to the port side uh, once uh, once the line has been connected to the crane. And then uh, the pilot just needs to make sure to kind of keep like a even tension. Um, to enable 
the crane to pull Herc. We're at 360 meters. So pilots, we're gonna quiet up back here in the back so that you all can get ready. Thank goodness, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, yeah, but we got time because we generally hold at 50, at 50 meters. So you need to answer questions, ask questions. It's all good to go. So you got about 300 more meters of me. Man, I <laughs> keep thinking we're shallower than we are. We might be passing the oxygen minimum zone now, and it is in a different spot. It's about 60 meters different from what it was last night. Interesting. 320 meters now. Those four hours last night went by so fast. Yeah. This four hours feels like we've been here all week. I think these last 200 meters feels like that. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Oh, am I supposed to be ascending? <laughs> 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 Just kidding. I got distracted. I we were doing a transect. Yeah, we're at 292 meters right now. 292 meters. I guess for anybody who's still watching and wants to continue watching, we will most likely be streaming the sample lab for a little while. Although I don't think we'll really have much commentary over it or anything. We'll just kind of be doing what we do. Watching everyone get everything unpacked. Yes. And preserved. Watching a lot of people trying to do a lot of different things at once. There were, yeah, I remember there was a lot going on last time. Well, that was also, a lot of us were training in yeah, that particular yeah. wet lab, so it's all pretty straightforward overall. It's just that there are multiple samples for some, s or multiple uh, sub samples that need to be taken for some samples, and different storage techniques, and different, uh, very specific labeling protocols and stuff. So we need to make sure we get it exactly right. That makes sense. And we have a lot more samples this time, so it could theoretically be a little chaotic again, but. <laughs> Lila well, there's is a lot of well rocks organized, so. I wonder if our geologists are on call waiting. I think we got seven. They better be. <laughs> I don't know what symbols. to do with the rock. <laughs> you put it in your pocket. Mm -hmm. Wow. Make a wish. Of course. Yes, you're you supposed wish. to throw it back over the and side of the boat. Yeah, exactly. You make a wish, throw it back over the side.
you're a Harry Potter character, what house would you be? Mm. I would like to be Ravenclaw, but I'd probably be in Hufflepuff. <laughs> womp womp. <laughs> womp womp, muggle. <laughs> 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 That's, That's harsh, way harsh, Ty. <laughs> I don't know. I'd be like, eh, for nah. forget about that. I'll just hang out in the Shire. <laughs> nice. See what I did there. See what I, did there. <laughs> I see what you did. A little there. cross pollination. If you're a hobbit, how tall would you be? <laughs> About no no taller than a child. It's <laughs> both the right answer. See what I did there? See what I did? That was a quote. I think it's that time of the year when you start doing another uh, Lord of the Rings trilogy marathon. I kind of hope they wait a little bit longer. Those the Peter Jackson movies were really good. Before they, it's uh, too soon. It's too soon. Before re re redoing them. Yeah, in my opinion, they're redoing them. They are redoing them. Oh, I don't know. No, I thought you said they were, and I said I think it's too soon. Oh those, no no those no. Original movies it's that were time so of good. Year for me to go through them again. Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. No, no one. I'm happy I misunderstood you. No one's good. Yeah. I, w I was worried that you misunderstood me. <laughs> no, I need to de dedicate 13 hours of my life. You watch these standard editions? Yep. Nice. That is 13 hours. I'll probably include The Hobbit in there, too. Just for... Oh, I didn't like The Hobbit. No, a lot of people didn't. I don't it know was why. Two, it should have been one movie. Maybe two. Uh, that's a lot, though. There's a lot going on. I know, I, but you I took... They took three... They took an epic series like Lord of the Rings and made three movies out of it. And then they take... a. A 300-page book and turn it into three movies? It's more than 300. The Hobbit? It's more than 300. Roughly. It's like a quarter of the size of the trilogy. Right. right. I mean, yes, I, I think it could have done with one or two. I don't think... I, I think one more, one wouldn't have done it. It would have been too, too rushed. It'd be hard to make a trilogy with only one movie. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Does that <laughs> defeat the purpose of the trilogy? Oh, I, see. Yeah. I think I heard what you said. Yeah. <laughs> no, it, was one of my, it was one of my favorite books. It was my favorite. Like, it's like, I... Dune's my I'm, favorite. I'm not, a good, I'm not a good student. Dune's my favorite book. And, uh... I'm not a good student, but we had to do that for, like, an eighth grade thing. And then, uh... The you read the, ho the Hobbit, sorry? Yeah, we had to read The Hobbit. And for I the love final, that book. It's a great one of my favorites. Was about the hot, was a, a final about everything that happened in the book. Mm. I got 99 out of 100, and the only the only reason I missed the question that I did was because I misread the question. Oh. And it, in my misreading it, I am right. Um, but uh, what did you love about that book? Everything. I yeah. Don't, I don't know what it was. I I don't know what it was. It was just it just got me. Yeah. Was it Schmeagle? <laughs> 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 Yeah, Shmeagle. I don't know. It just it just got me. Uh, I I I mean, I got through the Lord of the Rings, but Lord of the Rings is a hard read. It is a hard read. Uh, there's yeah. only there, I, mean, yeah. I get it. It's a flower. I don't need a chapter. It's got good parts, but Price. a lot of really yeah. slow moving yeah. parts that you have to get yeah. through to get to those good parts. Yeah, yeah it's true. And he'll be like, he'll be describing a a battle scene or something, and then he'll go off on a tangent for like <laughs> two or three pages describing you know the reflection in the armor. It's like okay, talking about the drama, talking about the drama. Just let the drama happen. With that being said, very good books. Clearly. All right. Engaging in a manual One ascent. 60. But yeah, I would definitely say that Hobbit is like one of my favorite books. I really like Dune. I never the original read Dune. The original Dune. Somebody Dune on the boat's reading Dune right now. Really I think Nick's good. reading it. It's, uh, I've read it four yeah, Nick times. is reading it's Dune. So He's reading the second one, I think. I'm, in, I'm intimidated by how much there is. Well, Dune. what? Dune. Sorry? I'm intimidated by it. I never Why? read it. It's just a lot. It's not a lot. Yeah, it's not that bad. The first book? 
Uh, I thought you meant the series. I have about the series. Uh, the second book was good, left. but um, what did you I think about know. the movie? I really liked the newest one. I thought I, could I really hear. did like it. Uh, it was pretty that. true to the book. Uh, there's a couple of things they left out, but obviously you can't put everything put everything into it. Yeah, it's a hard adaptation because there's like there's scenes in the book where like, for instance, they're all having dinner. Like there's a big banquet dinner, and like really there's no dialogue. It's all about what they're thinking in their heads about each other. And like, how do you how do you put that onto a, a movie? They're all sitting at each other, <laughs> like, just <laughs> looking so at funny. each other, right? <laughs> yeah, stuff like that is like a, if you want like a visual. For me, like good visual adaptations that that are more true to like the, the literary originals, right. tend to be like graphic novel type stuff because like, you're allowed to put those types of uh, sure expositions and stuff like that without having to. Hundred and thirty meters to go. But yeah, I hear it was good. I haven't, I haven't, I've yet to see it. I've yet to read the books. I would read the book first if you. That's what I always hear about. So it. inclined. Yeah. It's hard for me to read. I don't know if you were here last night. <laughs> yes, yeah, you told me that. But I love that you picked the lit class that you would teach. Oh, yeah. yeah. So what did you like about The Hobbit? Was it the cover? Or? <laughs> I think it was. <laughs> so harsh. <laughs> the funny. idea? I don't remember. Buddy. Actually, I actually remember the cover. It was the green one, and it has like the one with Gandalf walking up. Yeah. It's the one right there with that picture on it. No, oh, that was The Fellowship. Huh? It was the fellowship. Not the copy of the. That's, no, it's it's. Uh, wasn't it? No. I mean, there, it oh, could the be copy the copy I had had like rings on the front. Like the Hobbit oh, was a. I think it was a green one. No, no, the Hobbit was a red one. Yeah. The fellowship was a green oh, ring. Right. Two towers was yellow. Mm, the light is starting to come through the water. Blue is changing. We've got an ETS of six minutes. Do you know what I like? I like going like going to bookstores and then seeing like new uh, renditions of all like, of classic movies, uh, not classic movies, classic books. Yeah. Um, that are in the fair use and like they have like elaborate covers. You know, those mm -hmm. are always good. Uh, those are always always interesting. I want to buy them, but I only have so much money and so much space. Okay, we broke 100 meters. 100 Yay. meters. Hooray. We did it. Thank you for tuning in to KOET. <laughs> KOET. Deep Blue Water Radio. It's been right. a wonderful dive. Yeah. If you're not sleeping, we will put you to sleep. <laughs> All right, the back row is going to go a little quiet now. We'll let you guys take this away. Shh. But we'll be listening. <laughs> well, I'll be listening. Oh, yeah. No, we'll listen. <laughs> and muted. You think you're going to get it? You think you're going to get it in the, f in the, in the field goal? Sorry? You're going to get it in the field goal? Um, right now, it looks like it, but... Um, I, f I forgot that that's a thing, so I'm gonna try to. Uh, <laughs> I'll try to do that. Bring it back to the south a little bit. Seven five meters. Fifteen to turnover. Twenty five to turnover. I should say. So we hand over at uh, fifty at the payout. Yeah. Okay. It's not actual depth. Six zero meters, ten meters to transfer. Ten meters.
five zero meters. Fifty. Please. Yes, we do. Skating a little bit more as we get to the surface. Twenty five meters. It's so peaceful when the back row is not talking. Right. Back here and get so much more done. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> they've had, oh, clearly you've had enough of me. Yeah. Four hours is more than enough. I think I can turn off some of your lights. I'll definitely turn off the... Uh yeah, I probably don't need the lights. It's actually a really cool shot of Herc with the surface. What? Where? In uh, Atalanta's... Oh, the Atal oh, yeah, that's the uh, that's the ship, yeah. yeah. No, no, I'm looking at the, the tether cam. I'm looking oh, I see her. what you're saying, yeah, yeah. Just like this ominous box. All right, here we go. Right. This is like one of my favorite parts coming up. Because like, you get to see like the... <laughs> to see if it comes up in between. The hull of the ship. It looks so small, but so big. Are you still coming up? Oh, you're yep. like way over there. You're way up to the left. I'm strung way out. That's deliberate. Does that count as a field goal? No. No? No. Too close to the ship? Well, no, you're just not in the thing. What do you mean? It's right between, right below the... Right now below it the is. Huh? What are you talking about? That's good. Who's on the winch? They're gonna do this slide technique.
All right, video, I'm going to turn off uh, cams on uh, at Atlanta. Is that good? Yes, yes, it's good. Thank you. Turning it on. Control. Control bridge. Can we hold position here, please? Yeah, copy that. Hold position. You can go ahead and stop that. See? I'm going to try it like this first, and then if we um, if we need him to start uh, drifting, we can do that. Are they pulling off the cable yet? Oh, no, they're not. Sorry. Come on now. Gain is off, 100%. Okay. Mm, I can't make headway towards the ship. Might need him to. Okay, I didn't know if that was an option for them. But, all right. Sure. Right. Come on. Come on. Okay, all stations, that's uh, FERC uh, connected to the grid. Control copies. And bridge copies.
Come on now. Sorry? I would, uh, at least push out. I just can't, um, turn. Can't really lateral. There's a little too much current to oh, lateral okay, against it. Control copies. Bridge copies. I'm trying. As soon as I changed it last time, um, there's not as much power going, um, not as much jam going horizontal. So as soon as I turned, the current just kind of took me. So I'm going to try as best I can. Okay, that's her under the crane. Control copies. And bridge copy. I guess they can turn me with the umbilical, right? Okay. Uh. Ah, hydraulics bypass. High voltage when we come over the transom, right? That's what Mike said. You, uh, Trevor says like to have it just in case we can go, but we can turn it off right now. If you want to turn it off right now, that's over you. Whichever, whichever you want. All right, uh, kill her, please. Yep, kill it. Uh, I don't have to turn. Oh yeah, you can't. Uh, oh. Control van. Uh